Hi friends and welcome back to another video of Bullet Journal Engineer. My name is Emilia and today we will paint our March floral theme. You will learn step by step how to make hanging plants with watercolor and believe me, this is the most beginner friendly watercolor theme I've ever done. It's extremely easy to do and I will show you how to achieve easy, different and varied look of each of the plants as to obtain a beautiful but not too colorful drawing. And of course, in addition to the cover, we will make several Monty trackers that we will also decorate in the same way. Take your notebook and cup of tea and let's go! In the previous videos, we made the theme for February by only painting it with a real coffee. If you haven't watched this video, I will link it in the description. Well, we open our brand new pages and we hold them with clips so that the pages do not fall out when we start coloring with paints. Speaking of paints, in this video I will use two types of paints. The first one is the Glitter Palette by Paul Rubens. Very suitable if you want a glitter look of your drawings. But don't worry if you don't have it. For basic paints I will use very standard colors from the palette of Windsor and Newton. And more precisely Viridian Hue 696 and Subgreen 599. To be honest, it doesn't matter the brand you have or the palette you have at all, as long as you have at least one shade of green in them. So don't demotivate yourself if you don't have any of the supplies I use. To the right of the camera, outside of the camera actually, I have two glasses of water in which I will clean the brush so that there are no residual colors in the drawing. I arrange my palettes comfortably so that I can reach them easily without getting my hand tired and I start mixing the colors I need. I advise you to make 5 to 6 different shades of green. Well, of course, the number is of your choice, you can make 20 if you want. But I think that if there are too many, the drawing will become too colorful and we still aim for some coherence. Conversely, if there are less, like 2 or 3 green colors, well, the pages of the notebook will look like a big green spot. I mean, usually when you have a flower, they have different shades of green, not just 2 or 3, they have more. Actually, right now, I make exactly 5 shades of green, but in the process of drawing, you see that I will make even more mixtures between them, but they're going to be a closer one. I mean, we aim for less nuances here, so mixture between them is kind of fine. The two of the five green shades I have are actually two of my pure green colors I have and the other three are a mixture between green and yellow, green and brown, etc. Now that I have the colors preset, it's time to start with the leaves. I imagine a mental vertical line and I start making green leaves around or on it. When I say a leaf, you may all be imagining the typical belly leaves we all paint signs to your child. It is not a problem to draw all leaves the same, but I advise you to not do it. Why? Well, if you look at a flower, each leaf is turned in different direction. This means that from your perspective, it will have a different shape. No, no, <laughs> don't panic. It's not that complicated. What I'm trying to explain is that whatever shape you make the leaf, as long as you keep it the same size, it will look suitable for this plant. Here you can see that some of my leaves are round, others are more oblong. Well, of course, I try to make a relatively round shape and not make spaghetti leaves. For this I will first paint the leaves and then very lightly with a thin, thin brush we will add the stem. But you will see this later in the video. Now we continue with the leaves. To give a little more free look of the paints at the end, in addition to resizing them I also spread them apart. In this way, the transitions from very green at the top of the page to gradually translucent white will become very smooth and pleasing to the eye. As you can see, it's time to start with the stems. I choose the darkest shade of green and start with thin brush. The thinnest possible people, the thinnest possible. <laughs> Remember that mental vertical line we did at the beginning that we drew the leaves around it? So if you have drawn a leaf exactly on that mental line, no worries, you just pass it with the line for the stem and in this way you make an illusion that the stem is behind it. This is more or less all about the stems, you just connect the leaves and you try to not make 
a straight line because no plant looks exactly straight. Nature don't grow plants using a ruler or something else, so you, c- you can make them more freehand without worrying. And maybe you're wondering why I chose very dark green and not black or brown for the stem. This is because black or brown will contrast a lot with the green and the focus will be on the stems and not on the leaves. We don't want that. We want our focus to fall on the leaves that I've been painting for more than half an hour. (laughs) And how did I understand this with the focus? I really want to tell you that I'm super smart and I know a lot about color theory, but I don't. It was just a bit of luck because in the beginning, right here, I made a brow stem first and then I draw leaves around it and it looked awful. I don't like how it looked at all. So at this point on, I decided that I'm gonna draw first the leaves and then draw the stem. So I advise you to do the same. You see, little by little, we started to fill the leaves using different shades of green and different shapes. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video so far, make sure to give it a like or even subscribe if you want to see more upcoming videos like this one. In fact, at this point here, I decided that our drawing will look much more beautiful if I choose one predominant shade of green and others to stand around it as a very slight contrast. So... After some wonder, I found that this will be my main nuance as it is average among all the others and I also like it a lot. It's not very dark or it's not very light, so it's perfect for my main theme nuance. Another thing that I noticed during the painting that unlike January and February spreads, here the watercolor is not so much. That's why I mentioned in the beginning that this theme is beginner friendly. As long as you keep the leaves apart, the water is, isn't enough to fold or leak through your page. And it's actually pretty safe for beginners, really. You actually have no way to mess up here. You may notice that some of the leaves literally have drops of paint on them. Well, I'm not saying that you have to do that, but my idea is to not worry about the watercolors. And also another beginner-friendly advantage is that the shape of the leaves is not important. I mean, if you make a mistake, well, nobody will notice the leaves have various shapes and even if you look them at the perspective they can be even more strange so no worries about the leaves do them wherever your heart feel or whatever your paint do maybe (laughs) since drawing a lot of stems does not give me enough greenery at the top of the page and in my head i imagine that i make an amazing ombre green color you know at the top of the page i have green and then a little bit more green and white and then a tall white Well, this doesn't happen actually, so I start cheating by filling the space between the green leaves at the top and I add leaves that do not belong to any stem, but they're only there to fill space. So feel free to do that. Well, after this long odyssey, we finished our waterfall of plants and it's time to orient ourselves to the monthly March calendar. I have an inner feeling that I want Marsh to be surrounded by a reed. That's why I draw a circle with a compass. I I have no idea how this code in English I need to check. Uh, Well, I draw one big circle, but I think that is too big. So I draw again smaller and I start with writing March. In fact, I don't know what I messed up with the first letter. The whole M font is very crazy. And of course, when I try to fix it, I messed it up even more. And I'm not gonna touch it no more. I'm just gonna pretend that it's fine. Later on, to shift the focus from that crooked M to the letters themselves, I will add small elegant decorations, but I'll make them at the end of the video, so stay with you then to find out what I'm talking about. To be the coherent with the left side we, where we did our plants, I put the same hanging plants on the reed, and then I start experimenting with other shades and colors. In each theme, I like to have one element to emphasize a lot. In this case, are those hanging plants. I may continue to make weekly spreads with other plants. I will feel free to do that, but in every weekly spread or in every page, I will have at least one piece of hanging plants. It's just like something that follows up through the whole theme. (laughs) I don't know if I explain it well. Beside the hanging plants that I just drew, 
I start experimenting with another types of plants that I'm going to include in my weekly spreads as well because I want to have some kind of diversity, you know, not only hanging plants. And the one that I'm drawing right now actually turned out to be my favorite. It's really nice and the color is oh, amazing. So it's really easy to do actually. It, it can be done naturally because when you tip your brush into the paint at first it has more paint on it if that makes sense and when you put it on the sheet it gets more darker color and with the time with every leaf that you drew with the same brush you get more lighter color. <laughs> Okay, I'm not that good at explaining maybe, but that's why I have a YouTube channel with a video beside my voice and not only a podcast. So, yep, just you can see what I'm doing right there. It's really easy and beside that plant, actually, I start experimenting with another one like a fern. Is it a fern? I don't know. Let's Google it. Yes, it's a fern. It was very nice to paint because you can play with the different layers and your brush can be completely freestyle. Well, don't think that I know what I'm doing all the time while I'm painting. I don't. Maybe I'm just giving the appearance of someone who knows everything. I just like to experiment a lot. Right here, you saw I drew um, leaves, maybe? And <laughs> But I make a lot of mistakes, by the way. In the next video, I will upload my weekly spreads where I messed up a plant so much that actually there was no way to fix it and I cover it with just with craft paper. Well, as always, I pretend that I don't see my mistakes and I look everything from the sunny side. It seemed to me very aesthetically and pleasing not to close the reed in the circle but to leave the upper part open. So it creates a slightly more natural look and reminds me that at the end, plants go wherever they want. Great, we have a page. The only thing that it's missing is cold. But now we're gonna fix it. The quote I chose is a direct analogy to the quote, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Well, almost. To be honest, I really like this quote, no matter how cliche it is. Life is not fair. Some succeed quickly, other more slowly. Being good does not guarantee you that good things will gonna happen to you. But if you manage to get the best out of every situation, then you actually beat the life in its own game. And it's hard, I know. In fact, some of you maybe even know better than me how hard the life is. But honestly, if you're here and you have time to watch this video, then c congratulations. Because this means that you found your free time, time for yourself to do something for your hobby or just to listen stories of a stranger who is picking you on a display. Yep, you're doing great, believe me. I turn the page and it's time for monthly trackers. On the right side of this page, I will make a room for monthly goals, a stylistic calendar and of course, a big brain dome for all my necessary toes that I have in my mind 24-7. <laughs> You're maybe wondering where is my ruler, what is that purple thing in my hand? Well, at the moment me and my boyfriend were moving in a new apartment and all my bullet journal stuff are, are just everywhere. I mean, I lost my ruler and I lost much more stuff. Not actually lost, I just don't know where they in all those boxes. But yes, right now the cardboard ruler that I have, that purple thing, it works. It's not very convenient, but it works. On the left page, we place my favorite daily stuff tracker, the ultimate tracker to track every hour what, were, what are you doing. Only after a few videos, I will explain how this tracker works and how to use it to its maximum. Or if I already have published it, you'll find the link in the description of this video. Once we have drawn the individual fields, it's time to decorate the page with some greenery. I'm starting to draw the same leaves as on the previous page, but this time, however, I try to make them look like they're behind my fields. So I skip the field when drawing that plant and then I continue below the field. 
In this way, I make perspective that my, for example, ghost field is above the plants. It's really cute, I think. And because I haven't stopped talking for like 15 minutes already, I will leave you enjoy the painting just for a few seconds without my voice. After I finish the painting, I choose 5 colors for the daily soft tracker that would go best with the theme. In this case, I have dark green, green, light green, ochre and brown. Each of these colors will indicate specific activity that I performed on that day. But as I said, more in the video exactly for this tracker. Well, that's the end of our story today, guys. In the next video, we will make 3 thematic weekly spreads with different plants. We will talk a little more about house plants in general and how the notebook helps our daily lives. In order to not miss a video where for 15 minutes I do not stop inflating your heads with talking, subscribe to the channel and I'll be more than happy to have you here and talk about different topics with you. Well, thank you from the bottom of my heart for staying here till the end and see you in the next video guys. Until then, don't forget to stay on the sunny side.